Those who can, do. Those who can't, talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Or you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people? Or can you step up? Well, good. Wednesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing. And being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report, without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, it is crazy. You know, one thing I will say, you know, part of the reason why I believe I've gotten to 100,000 subscribers um, is because of all the drama that has been the Dallas Cowboys since we lost in January to the Green Bay Packers. People love seeing the misery. And if you are Jerry Jones... If your whole thing is you want people talking to you about you guys, well, <laughs> they are talking. People are tuning in to me because they want to see me whine. They want to see me bellyache. They want to see me cry. They love the misery of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, at least we do have something positive coming up, and that will be the draft. That's where we have at least something to look forward to because I can't think of anything positive that's really happened um, this off season for the Cowboys, you know, we talked about the worst off season before where Jerry Jones was, you know, at the paternity test, we lost to Mari Cooper and Cedric Wilson, you know, it, it's just been crazy and it just doesn't seem to get any better. And so now we have the situation with Dak Prescott that we're basically both sides are agreeing that, you know what? Now's not the time to deal with this contract situation. And so, you know, we don't know if this is a ploy by the Cowboys to kind of say, Dak, we want you to deal to get a better deal because they love a deal. Or if this is actually Dak Prescott kind of looking at the abyss and saying, I don't know that anything's going to change. I've been here for eight years, and all I'm seeing is this, this addition by subtraction. I see other teams that are going out to help it. So maybe – being the Dallas Cowboys quarterback isn't the dream that I thought it was when it comes to trying to win a Super Bowl. That could be it. But there's been so much blowback in things. Um, Jory Epstein, wow. She kind of puts this into perspective um, what may be the reasoning behind the Cowboys taking the hit on Dak Prescott's contract and also – throw shade on Micah Parsons a little bit on what people see um, as far as big games. You know, we always talk about Dak Prescott doesn't rise to the occasion in the playoffs. They kind of put it in that neither does Micah Parsons. Let's go to the tape. Yeah, I think to me you can't talk about what the Cowboys should do without Dak Prescott without considering a few factors. One, CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons contracts. And two, Mike McCarthy and the future of the head coach and sort of the structure that they're running. I think on the contract standpoint, $59 million as a cap hit seemed completely unrealistic, undoable until the salary cap came out. It was a $30 million bump from last year. And again, as one Cowboys person who I was talking to about this at the combine said to me, well, we thought it'd go up 15 or so. So it's really more of a $15 million bump than a, than a $30 million bump relative to what I expected. But every exec across the league that I talked to projected a lower number for this cap than actually came in. And so if there is a year to take a $59 million cap hit and give yourself some flexibility, it's this year. I mean, think about it. Because if not, okay, if it's 15 above what they want, that's what, 45, 44? I mean, it, it's not as crazy as it sounds, particularly when you still have some of your stars on rookie contracts. Um, I think what you run into is what's the order of the contracts you want to get done to me. Like you get CD lamb done this off season. CD lamb was, he was number one in receptions last year in the league, top three in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. He is reliable. He's a great locker room guy. He has been great with Dak. He's been great with quarterbacks in college. Like he is someone who you need to lock up. And the only thing you gain to gain by waiting is you're going to pay him more. And so yeah. I think that the Cowboys saw that last time and they have a lot of deal inertia then. They had a lot of deal inertia now. I definitely think there is some frustration in the front office about some of that of like, why aren't Jerry and Steven a little more adamant about getting things done? But to me, mm -hmm. like, go get CD done. 
you're just going to pay him more. You know, you want him. Mike is an interesting one because I think that <laughs> I was talking to a, a, a defensive coach from another team about this. And I was just trying to understand because like on one hand, we see Mike's sack numbers. We see what he can do. But it's like, think about the biggest games that they had, the games against San Francisco, the playoff games. Like what did Micah do in those games? And mm. I had one one coach tell me when – the Cowboys are winning. Micah's a Hall of Fame player. When the Cowboys need him most, he's pretty average. And I was asking, I'm like, okay, well, if he's taking off some plays, like people say Chris Jones takes off plays, like he, I still think he's worth the money. I still think he's helped the Chiefs to Super Bowls. And this coach, I think, wisely told me, Chris Jones takes off, Chris Jones takes off some plays, but he makes them when they matter most. Yeah. Micah is not 100% on all plays but he kind of makes them when they matter least. And I'm not saying least, but he's not making them when they matter most. So I would say like, you have to decide. That sounds like the whole Cowboys team. That sounds like the entire team. I know. When I told this to someone in the front office, they started naming some other people on that roster. And I think there's something like culturally. So it's interesting. But all of this is to say, you kind of have like a split in the Cowboys front office. I definitely have people telling me in that front office, like we believe in Dak. He's a great quarterback. He's the glue of this roster, the glue of the locker room. And no matter what coach we think we'll bring in, we believe they'll want to work with Dak. And you have other people who say like, well, if we haven't gotten over the hump now, how are we ever going to get over it? And if we can't get over it with him, like, what do we do? One last thing I'll say, and then I want to hear your thoughts on all of this, is I was talking to someone and I was like, okay, so if Mike doesn't work out this year, like, do you think Belichick is, is like in serious contention next year? And he goes... Bill Belichick would walk into our facilities, see all of the infrastructure around it, basically essentially see the country club mentality, the Dr. Pepper Keurig headquarters that overlooks the practice field, all of that, and be like, I can't coach here. And to me, that is the root of the problem with all of this. To me, it's not about is Dak Prescott physically what he's able to do. I don't think you're going to find a better quarterback for the Cowboys than Dak Prescott in at least the next five years. And so if you're getting rid of him, what is your plan? I think that the issue is this sort of whole Cowboys infrastructure. And so then to me, you get into the point of like, get CD done, decide if you want to do Dak now or in a year, because I think that you're not going to find someone better. And I think that Dak has shown he's willing to bet on himself contractually before. And so I don't think he's going to like hold out if he doesn't get the contract. I have questions about whether you should keep Mike a long term. That might be for another show, but hmm. I think it's really interesting. So yeah. I th- wow. That is kind of crazy. But remember, you know, <clears throat> things don't just start now. You can go back and so on. I don't know if you guys remember. I think it was 2020 when our defense was playing terrible. Um, Dak Prescott was starting out. This is the year Dak Prescott got hurt. But our defense with Mike Nolan literally was historically bad. And you had Xavier Woods say, as this defense is horrendous. That defense gave up more points than any team ever in the history of the Dallas Cowboys, and that was before 17 games. He says, nobody plays full speed for 70 plays. And I'm sitting here thinking, as bad as your defense is right now, you would want to be playing you know, full speed every single play till you do something. This was kind of ridiculous when you started hearing some of the things that you were getting from some of the players. So I don't know if this is cultural or not, but as we look through here and everybody has the ventum of, you know, Dak Prescott doesn't show up for the playoffs, nobody shows up for the playoffs with the Cowboys. Let's be clear here. Nobody shows up for the playoffs. Oh, you say Jake Ferguson did. Jake Ferguson had a really good game. He gave you hope. But there is something wrong with the Cowboys. And, you know, of course, now I'm seeing articles that let the games begin that uh, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray could be the answer for the Cowboys uh, for quarterback, that the Cowboys should be looking at bringing in Kyler Murray. It's like, wait a minute, didn't we, don't we have Trey, have we already moved on from Trey Lance? Now we're starting the rumors of Kyler Murray to the Cowboys? Wow. That was quick. It's safe to say things are ugly here. And it seems like the more that the Cowboys try and do, the worse it gets. We went from all in to doing it with less 
to we're not signing anybody. I, I just don't know where to go with this. So let me finish this off on the Dallas Cowboys playing with fire. One of the most productive quarterbacks in the NFL last season. You see the numbers here. He ranked in the top three in completion percentage, touchdown interception ratio, total QBR, and off target percentage. Owner Jerry Jones talked about the DAC contract earlier today. Not taking anything away from uh, Dak wants to uh, do any and everything he can on and off the field to help us win. We are where we are. We have our contract. We're locked and loaded for this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we can see as we move along uh, how we are thinking, we inclusive of everybody here, us, Dak, uh, and we'll see what we do. I don't have anything to report today all like going toward next year. Uh, Hawk, what do you now make about how this has all been handled by Jerry Jones and company? Jerry Jones, you are playing with fire, brother. Uh, wow. I think he's under this assumption that we are still in the old ways of negotiation where it's winner takes all. That's the only way to win a deal. And that is not good business. And it won't work in this scenario. He doesn't have any leverage against Dak Prescott. And the longer this drags on, the more Dak Prescott is likely to say, well, let me go see what the market says. They lucked up the last time. And the luck is a probably not a good way to put it <laughs> just because he got hurt. And then he, they had more leverage in that scenario. If Dak goes into this season with the mindset, you know what, I'm going to play this out and then hit the market, he'll have the biggest contract we've probably ever seen from a quarterback, and it would be deservingly so based on what he's done mm -hmm. and his gumption to wait to the end to negotiate a new contract. Yeah, Hawk's right about this. The waiting is what killed him the first time when you look yeah. at what happened. Dak Prescott, uh, people need to remember this. That, like, this is the Dallas Cowboys. For a while... The starting quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, who was winning games and playing at a high level, was making like 800 grand. He was the biggest bargain in all of sports. And when they negotiated with Dak back then, they tried to hold the fact uh, that he hadn't made a ton of money yet against him to try to get him to take an undermarket deal. Well, he stared Jerry Jones down, played at a high level, and so he ended up, you know, getting to the franchise tag and then ultimately putting them in this point where now the cap hit for him is over $55 million. Like, he's won the game of chicken with Jerry Jones in the past. And ultimately, like, just as Hawk said, he's going to win it again. This reminds me of the, the Drew Brees situation a little bit. Like, look, Drew was getting older. His cap number was really high. You had to keep extending him out. Now, the benefit for the Saints was Drew continued to play at a high level. Like, that needs to happen in Dallas. And Dallas really doesn't have a choice other than to have it happen with Dak Prescott. You know, Hawk, some have wondered, like, Mike McCarthy's deal lines up with Dak's deal. Do they try to see how all that plays out with both of them? But it still feels like, to your point, the leverage is with Dak. How do you think McCarthy factors in here as Jerry looks at it? I, I, I think he's B to Dak Prescott's A because, again, the leverage is all on Dak. He mm -hmm. has stared them down, and, and to Tim's point, he has money now. That's not going to work this go-around. He's okay to wait. <laughs> Good point. Time for one more thing before we go. There we go. It's time for him to wait. So we'll see what, what we have. You know, we've got um, listening on my live stream and things. You know, we've got all kinds of solutions to the Cowboys quarterback problems. We had people that were literally saying uh, last night, it was kind of cool uh, listening to people that said, you know, Cooper Rush is 5-1 and one as a starter with the Cowboys, that Cooper Rush can run this offense. So, yeah, we've got that. And, of course, we've got Trey Lance. And now, of course, we've got uh, the whole idea and the concept of um, now what quarterback are we going to bring in here? Because Kyler Murray could be the answer. It's going to get interesting, to say the least. Um, I don't, Honestly, in the end, I think what's going to happen is Dak Prescott will get his contract. He'll be signed and he'll be brought back. And nothing will change as far as the Cowboys go. We'll be in the same situation. We'll forget about all this stuff by the time training camp gets here. And by the time the season starts, the Cowboys win a couple of games. We're going to be hearing that the Cowboys are a Super Bowl contender. Because that is the cycle that we're in. This is Groundhog Day, people. This is Groundhog Day. And it's going to continue as long as the Joneses know that they can play with our emotions. I hope you all have a wonderful day, 
and uh, I got to head up the road. I'm working on that house, uh, the old farmhouse up there. Uh, I've got to lay some tile in the shower and uh, on the floor, and uh, I've got to change the shower device and stuff. So I got work to do, good people. I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I will see you real soon. Peace.